When it comes to lowering the grocery bill or trying to survive solely on a garden, there are five plants that you absolutely must master to make it affordable and attainable to nearly anyone. And truthfully, you don't need all the fancy gear. You don't need a greenhouse for majority of these to even happen. Now, my list includes some that are for self-defense all the way to ones that will feed your family on nearly a single plant. These will work great for container gardeners, raised bed gardeners, and those of us that have a full in-ground area. So first, let me give you a shocking surprise of the current zone that I'm in and how you can literally garden in nearly any climate. Welcome to a April blizzard in my zone three. This means, like I said, you can garden in nearly anywhere and you can be successful even in a climate like this where the gardening season hasn't even kicked off. The first thing you want to consider is summer squash, in particular zucchini. Before you click off, hear me out here. Zucchini is a prolific plant that's easy to grow, can be grown in nearly any situation. It's not uncommon for most gardeners to be giving these zucchinis away at the end of the year. However, one unknown truth about zucchinis is that they store well in cold storage, they can be pressure canned, they can be frozen, and they can even be dehydrated and ground down into gluten-free flour, meaning a really calorie dense recipe can be made simply from those summer squash. So zucchini, definitely top of the list of must master crops, probably the easiest one on this list also. Next up is actually the ones that I grow on this trellis here, and that is winter squash. This can include acorn, butternut, spaghetti, you name it. These are high in calories, high in carbs, and a single plant can actually yield pounds of food flesh. Yes, pounds of food flesh. They say the general rule is about three plants per person to get you from that year to the next growing season when these are harvestable. Now, I think that's a little bit too high and I generally have spaghetti squash that's left over and will can be reseeded the next year. That's actually the next key when choosing from these five crops is the ability to save seeds from them. These seeds are not only better for your climate and in this case, an extreme climate, they're better adapted to the days that we have, the temperature fluxes we have, etc., and so forth. So seed saving is huge and winter squash allows for this to happen with ease. I still have spaghetti squash in my storage and I didn't can it or anything. Next up is actually perennials and specifically perennials that work in your zone. So have an understanding of what your zone is and what works best in your environment. Perennials can include things like rhubarb, asparagus, and more vegetative plants all the way to actual berries or entire stone fruits like peaches or apples, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries. What you're going to find is that in your little microclimate that is your yard, strawberries may not do well, but blueberries will. And so getting these plants established is very important and mastering which ones work best in your environment is also key. Now keep in mind, these don't just provide food, they actually provide some snow capture. And that is because they leave some sort of a structure behind. Now I rely on plants that aren't meant to get through winter to aid in my snow capture, such as this tomato chalice behind me, because I don't have much room for these perennial plants. But these are plants that will feed you, you don't have to start indoors, and you don't have to wait until the fall to get a harvest like we typically see sometimes with the winter squash. So perennial plants, definitely up there on the list. Now the next one, some of you are gonna think I selected because of Nate, and I promise you Nate has nothing to do with this, but it is potatoes. Potatoes have a number of minerals that are much needed for the human body. They're easy to grow and they also store well. I personally don't get seed potato anymore and I just use my own potatoes that I grew from last year. I grow enough and save enough and build up that stock over time. The reason for this is because again, potatoes grown in my climate, grown in my soil do best here. So start stocking up on your seed potatoes, defer gratification for years to come and you'll get a really hearty stock of potatoes. The key is loose ground and if you watched my video from harvest last year when I brought in a ginormous potato for Nate to try out, one of the first things he definitely said was that's insane I didn't even know potatoes could get that big and they can and they taste delicious okay the last one is definitely peppers in particular hot peppers now the reason for this is because they can be used obviously in self-defense against four-legged creatures and two-legged creatures that may be trying to harm you but they also help with food fatigue if you don't like the taste of wild game if you're not the greatest cook in the world hot peppers remedy everything 
Now, one thing is that they do need to be started indoors early if you're starting from seed. The seed is savable and it's really easy to save the seed from these guys. However, you can make these a perennial plant even in our cold climate. You can overwinter these indoors with absolute ease without a grow light if you simply place them in a cold room in the dark and let them go dormant. The other thing is you could grow them indoors all year round, treat them as a regular shrub and actually get some harvest from them during the winter months, which is what I actually do with mine. So peppers definitely make the last of this list. So if you're new to gardening and you just wanna try this out, I would start with those five and you will see really satisfying results with next to no effort placed into them. They grow great in containers, in the ground, and even raised beds. So give them a shot and let me know in the comments down below what your top five absolute must grow to survive the inflation of food. I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.